Hello and welcome back to your Average Joe's Sports Network. I'm your host, Drew Hoover. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to my friends Caleb and Shelby, the future Mr. and Mrs. Caleb Kelsey. Uh, they have been my friends the last two years at my current job. Obviously, I'm moving to Orlando and they're sad to uh, see me leave, but they have been nonetheless supportive. Uh, I got to meet their daughter a few weeks ago over at China Buffet. And uh, I heard that they have seen my videos. In fact, Caleb said that on the way to work, he was listening to one of my videos, in which Caleb was like, are you listening to Sports Center or ESPN? Nope, I'm listening to Drew. And she's like, oh my God, he sounds really good. So to hear that feedback uh, means the world to me. Um, uh, it's gonna be a shame to see me leave, especially that, that uh, Shelby is Two months due. Uh, she'll be having a baby soon. She's ha they're having another girl, and it's, sh it's a shame we're gonna be missing it. But uh, my heart goes out to them. Thank you guys for your support. And without further ado, let's get into another segment of draft needs. And we're going to the AFC East. A lot has happened in one year. Tom Brady went from a Patriot to a Buccaneer, and in one year took the Buccaneers to the Super Bowl. And after one year, after 20 years of the Patriots winning that division, with the exception of 08, by the way, uh, it now became the Bills to lose. And they did take advantage of it. They went to the playoffs in, in three of the last four years and pretty much have established themselves as a playoff team. And they went all the way to the AFC Championship game to face the Kansas City Chiefs. They were one game away. Uh, Josh Allen had an MVP year. Uh, even though I'm happy that my Aaron Rodgers won the MVP, I think Josh Allen was just as deserving. Stephon Diggs, who by the way, I saw him play in Minnesota against the Packers many times, had his best year last year, already established a connection with Josh Allen. And so you gotta think there's not a lot of things that they need to cover in order to get over that hump and to be in that Super Bowl in 2022. So what can they do? I look on the offensive side, you know, Again, Savon Diggs. They got Cole Beasley as slot receiver. They just signed Emmanuel Sanders as, as their speed guy. I think they could go running back. Now, I know it seems sounds uh, redundant because the last few years they've just keep drafting running backs. They drafted Devin Singletary out of FAU. They drafted uh, Zach Moss out of Utah. And so far, both of them have experienced injuries. Now, I feel like they've been struggling to find a uh, stability at the running back position since they let go of Sean McCoy, which I thought was a mistake. I thought it was a mistake when they let Marshawn, Marshawn Lynch go that was many years ago. Uh, some Buffalo Bills would disagree with me, but uh, I think they should have kept him because obviously his career in Seattle. But um, if they're, I, mean, I don't know if they could do it in the first round. Um, you think of Travis Etienne and Najee Harris, I think they might be gone by then. They could draft a running back there. But let's just say they wait for the second and third round to draft a running back. Uh, it seems like their common theme is to draft running backs that are dual threats. It's hard about e even when they cited veterans like Frank Gore or TJ Yeldon. Uh, they really like guys that they can also rely on the passing game. And so when I look at this uh, running back class, there's one guy that I feel like they would love to grab, and that is Kenneth Gainwell, running back from Memphis. You're talking about 2,212 all-purpose yards, a total of 17 touchdowns. Um, man, this guy can really burst through the gaps. It really has nice acceler acceleration. Uh, he had seven 100-yard games. His career yards per carry were 6.6. .6. And, you know, I think he's going to be a very good addition to that running back group. Uh, but let's say they go defensive side, you know, uh, obviously in the first round, there's a few, you know, talk about that second half, you know, people are saying that's where the defensive line is, maybe they, they go defensive line, they could have drafted a uh, linebacker. I think they go, you know, quarterback, you know, Josh Norman, it, uh, they have, as far as I know, they're not signing him back, but I still feel like they would like to improve considering the way the AFC Championship game turned out. And... There's a guy similar to Josh Norman's uh, physicality that I feel like they could benefit and really would be attracted to. And that is J.C. Horn, quarterback, cornerback, 
from South Carolina, also known as the son of Joe Horn, the former wide receiver from the New Orleans Saints back in the early 2000s. And like I said, you know, when I compare him to Josh Norman, that means he's very aggressive off the line, uh, very hard hitting cornerback. And to me, I'm always, when I see a cornerback that hits hard like a linebacker, I notice. You know, I noticed that when my, Minka Fitzpatrick went in the NFL. Obviously, he's had some success with the Steelers. I saw that with Jalen Ramsey when he came out of Florida State. Even though he's moved from team to team, he's regardless the number one corner in the league. So I feel like, you know, I want to be looking at Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech or Patrick Sutan from Alabama. But I feel like if J.C. Horn slips to the Buffalo Bills, it could end up being that push that they need to get to the Super Bowl. And now let's go to the New England Patriots. The team, like I said, that used to be the king of the crop in the AFCs. And, you know, as of Colin Cohort said on his Fox Sports radio show, they're kind of lost without Tom Brady. And, but I think this year, um, Tom, Bill Belichick wants to show that, yes, Tom Brady had a huge deal to do with that dynasty, but he was also part of it as well. And I think it's really out to show that Bill, Bel that Bill Belichick is deserved the part of the credit for their success. And that may be the reason for their aggressiveness in free agency. Signing guys like uh, uh, Jalen Mills, and you know, they sign a few defensive linemen, a few pass rushers. So um, I feel like, you know, I haven't seen this kind of aggressiveness since uh, when they traded Randy Moss for Randy Moss with the Oakland Raiders. And then we see how that turned out. So, um, yeah, so if they go to the NFL draft now, what do they have left to do? Um, they could still end up improving that defense. Uh, to me, they like guys that they can put in multiple spots, give offenses different looks. Uh, when I think of a guy like that, there's a guy from Michigan that to me is a Swiss Army knife. And that is Cutie Pay, defensive lineman from Michigan. And the University of Michigan has an act for having very versatile defensive linemen. Rashawn Gary, uh, who is who plays in uh, Green Bay is an excellent example of that. This guy can play from the defensive end position, from an edge rusher, to even playing nose tackle. An example of this in the NFL would be J.J. Watt, former Texan, now with the Arizona Cardinals. The Texans would put him in different spots to find weaknesses in the offensive line to exploit it and put pressure on the quarterback. If I'm the Patriots, if I'm Bill Belichick, I, I would be gravitating towards this man and want to get him on my team. They already have another uh, Wolverine down there, Chase Winovich, went from special teams now to starter. I think that Cutie Pay would be an excellent addition to that defense. But what if they decide, again, what if they decided to go aggressive? What if they decided to go offense? Um, they did sign down Snagalore, but then again, they're, the Patriots have said that they are getting trade talks for Nikhil Harry. Now, I'm not saying they got to do it, but it, it, it just makes you think that maybe they can go wide receiver. But I look at the running back position. Again, uh, they haven't signed James White back. You have Sonny Michelle, who's been struggling with injuries the last few years. Damian Harris was the guy that pretty much was carrying the running back last year. So they could, like I said, giant, uh, giant, uh, sign James White back. Or... They could draft Javante Williams, the running back from North Carolina. And if you are familiar with uh, North Carolina Tar Heel football, you'll know that they had so many weapons. You talk about the, the quarterback, man. He could be a, an excellent pros, uh, prospect to look at once he enters, enters the NFL draft. He had two star wide receivers. By the way, both went into the uh, NFL draft this year. And Javante Williams was a part of a tag team with Michael Carter, which you might recognize him from the Senior Bowl. And despite all these weapons, he's the one that came out as the offensive MVP. He was second team All-American. He's been first and second team All-CC. Ah, oh, man, I just love the way he uh, bursts through the gaps. I love his cuts. To me, he reminds me of LaShawn McCoy. And if you ask a lot of experts, some, they have a similar opinion I do, where 
I prefer Javante Williams over Michael Carter. Now again, Michael Carter did prove himself in the Senior Bowl, but I would still probably put Javante Williams over them. And I think if you're the Patriots right here, and you get a guy like Javante Williams and mix him with, like I said, Sonny Michelle and Damian Harris, perhaps the Patriots could be more of a run-based team than a pass team. And not to mention, like I said, they could always add Cam Newton, which by the way was one of their top rushers last year. So, let us move on to the Miami Dolphins. Uh, by head coach Brian Flores, who pretty much is trying to duplicate what Bill Belichick is doing in Miami. He, did, In fact, he signed a few uh, New England, former New England Patriots last year. Um, I look at Tua Tagovailoa at quarterback. I hated the news when they were saying, hey, they could trade for Deshaun Watson and swamp. I, I may have to get to another segment of how I feel about not only that, but the state of franchise quarterbacks in general. But I feel like Tua Tagovailoa has still a lot to prove. And I feel like if the Miami Dolphins are just focused on building a team around them, they can really show that Tua Tagovailoa can be their franchise quarterback. And it starts with the number three pick. If, if we're all right and the first two picks are quarterbacks, then the world is their oyster. They can make any wide receiver they want. So I think what they want is a tight end. And Kyle Pitts, tight end from Florida. Um, you talk about, man, probably one of the most athletic tight ends we've seen since Vernon Davis. And man, he made some of the most athletic catches we've seen in NFL history. You talk about Kyle Pitts, had a career 100 receptions, 1,492 yards, and 18 touchdowns, 11 of which were last season. And so I feel like, you know, I look at Mike Kaziski at tight end, you know, they, I, I've always been wanting to see him take a role and see, and see him make a connection with Tua Tagovailoa. But if they're looking for more of a pass uh, tight end, you know, a guy, a guy that can really make a difference, I mean, you can't, you can't go on with Kyle Pitts, honestly. I would take Kyle Pitts over any of the wide receivers in this draft. And that, it, I mean, that's saying something. Continue you have Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle. I think he's that good that you draft him at number three. So, but they have a second pick in the first round. And, you know, they said they could go defense. Uh, you know, I did mention Cutie Pay. Like I said, since Brian Flores does uh, duplicate, you know, Bill Belichick's philosophy, if QD Pay drops out to them. He could draft them as well. But I think, you know what? Let's continue adding weapons. Let's, let's draft another wide receiver, why don't we? And maybe I'm sounding a little, you know, repetitive, and I'll explain myself in a second. But also from the state of Florida, also a Florida Gator, is a wide receiver named Kadarius Tony. Now, why am I doing two Florida Gators? I mean, you really think they're gonna do that? I, it's not that uncommon for sp specifically the state of Florida for Florida teams like Tampa Bay, like Jacksonville, and even Miami to pick guys from their own state. You look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. When, it, I mean, pretty much this all started, you know, back in the days when Gus Bradley was the head coach, when he was drafting guys like Blake Bortles from Central Florida, Jalen Ramsey from Florida State, Devontae Fowler from Florida. Even last year, the Jacksonville Jaguars were like C.J. Henderson, cornerback. And you talk about uh, even Tampa Bay. They've drafted from, the Florida, from Florida State several times. Last year, Antonio Winfield Jr. Obviously, he ended up being a difference maker. Back in 2015, when they drafted Jameis Winston, number one overall. And now, you look at Miami right here. I mean, a lot of that has to do with probably the economy. You know, Florida has the third best economy. And about, you know, if you're, if, if you're really focused on business side of things, you, you, you take guys like, like I said, Kyle Pitts and Darius Tony, and that fan base goes to Miami. And all of a sudden you're talking about more business because like I said, they're familiar with the community. They've made an establishment there. And since they're not going very far, they take their business from Florida, from the Florida Gators to also the Miami Dolphins. So from a business perspective, that's actually pretty smart. So finally, let's go to the New York Jets. And this is an interesting one, the number two pick, because 
there's been talks about maybe trading the pick, particularly in regards to Deshaun Watson. I mentioned him earlier. When Deshaun Watson expressed his uh, disdain and said he wanted to leave Houston, the Jets were the number one team that he said he would want it to go. And I'm thinking, you know what, Houston, let's be reasonable here. Deshaun Watson doesn't want to be there. If, 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 he really, if he really wants to go to the Jets, ask for that number two pick, and all of a sudden you can get the best quarterback that's available right there, which is really good. But obvi obviously they're like, you know what? He's our quarterback, and he's here to stay. And obviously they have a backup plan, You, if you've heard of the sign of Tyrod Taylor. So I think they're really determined on keeping him there. So let's just say for argument's sake that the Jets keep that number two pick. As much as I like Sam Darnold, and I still think he has a future in this NFL, you can't pass up Zach Wilson, quarterback from BYU. And uh, there's been a lot of talks, you know, when it comes to like people even favoring him over Trevor Lawrence. And I, and I can understand why, because when you look at the film, I think he's one of the most accurate quarterbacks and the best decision makers in this draft. And really, when you look at quarterbacks, you're hoping, I mean, again, I'll get to this on a segment later on, but I feel like that scouts and general managers like quarterbacks that, they, that mature quickly. And I think Zach Wilson is a guy that can pick up this game quickly. And I feel like, you know, he's not gonna make, you know, big plays. He's not gonna try to force anything, which I think that's been the case, you know. You know, talking about uh, Sam Darnold, I uh, talk about Mark Sanchez a few years before. You know, if you talk to uh, people that have been around the NFL for some time in the news, People say, we're look they keep looking for the next Joe Namath. Perhaps Zach Wilson could end up being their next Joe Namath. We'll see, but he's definitely got a high ceiling. So you got the second that they get this is another team in the AFC East that's got two picks in the first round. And again, they could go defense, but to me, I am stressing that if you draft a quarterback, you need to try to put pieces around him right away. Because I, one of the reasons why I think Sam Donald still has a future is because they, I think they put little effort to put a team around him, whether it's putting you know more protection in the offensive line or giving him more wide receivers to throw to, quality wide receivers. And so I'm thinking if you, you if you really want Zach Wilson to see, you got to give him a proper cast on that offense. And I think a proper uh, addition would be a guy that. You know, maybe not be passing catches all the time, but definitely takes the pressure off of winning games. And especially if you're a rookie quarterback, you want to try to learn the game at your own pace. And so I feel like if you want a player that does that for you, you have to draft a running back. And the running back I think they're going to select is Najee Harris, running back from Alabama. This guy is athletic. Let's start talking about the things that he's done. He is the Crimson Tide all-time leader for total touchdowns in a career with 57. He has the most rushing scores, which means he has more than Mark Ingram and Derek Henry. And what really won me over, really, was an interview with Bucky Brooks. I really encourage you to watch that interview. And when I listen to that interview, I mean, we talk about the quarterback-driven lead, the quarterbacks are the leader of their team. I feel like Najee Harris could end up being a running back that a team can rally behind. Not saying Zach Wilson will not think he'll do the same thing. But I feel like I feel like he can really rally a team behind him, Najee Harris can. And so if you get a guy like Zach Wilson and Najee Harris on your offense, not saying they're gonna you know make the playoffs, obviously. Obviously the three teams I mentioned before them have a way better chance of making the playoffs. But I think they'll definitely make things interesting in the AFC East, and that is where we end this segment please like this video and please subscribe and also tell your friends and share this is a new channel i'm slowly learning how to get this thing going but i hope to eventually let it grow i'm already talking to people about graphic designs of getting my new brand and logo up and going so i am really dedicated to this please tell your friends like subscribe and share let's go